Hello, welcome back. This is Kench 1913, and we are Let's Playing The Sailor's Dream. In the last episode, we started the game off, explored the lighthouse, got our first song, and uh, now we're going to continue with the game. Uh, so, let's just quickly go over what characters we're dealing with in this game. We're dealing with a little girl and a woman who throws her songs into bottles that we hear once a day. And uh, something happened where the house that they lived in, uh, there was some sort of fire. So let's head left again. And as you saw, there was a celestial sanctuary. We're going to go there eventually, but I want to go in order from uh, right, from, from the lighthouse to the right. You know what I mean? I believe this is the next area, but let's just make sure. But yeah, the music in this game is, trans is, is great. So this is the Transmission Horror Lodge. Horror Lodge. Anyways, we're going to check that out later. I'll explain how that works. So here's the secret lighthouse. So we've been here. Now let's head right. So yeah, the Transmission Horror Lodge, what that place is... Uh, I guess I'll explain it later, but let's head to the far away ruins. So we're going to try to unlock memories here and learn more about the story, about what happened at the house, and what was going on. Some woman, the woman apparently was was talking about uh, someone, a sailor. So now we can go to the courtyard of the elusive garden. Let's head there. And you can kind of hear some, you know, ambient sounds of stuff, which is kind of cool. Now, here you can touch both circles have this object over here, like, kind of, you know, meld into where you want it, which is kind of cool. Yeah, you kind of have it do its own thing, so that's kind of neat. And now let's head over to the buried passageway. And yeah, you can hear us going through water there, and climbing up this ladder. Can you hear dog barking? That might actually come into play. Oh look, here's an old bone. So let's check that out. It had it has bite marks from the teeth of teeth of a dog named Archibald. At least that's what the woman in the small house would call him. No one calls him anything as he limps between the empty crates and the barrels. Archibald likes the harbor. There are many smells there, most of the humans wouldn't go near them, but those who smell wondrous treasures from lands far away. Just like the man who used to visit the woman, Archibald sometimes goes to the cliff where the woman lived. The ground where the house once stood smells of fire and smoke just like the girl who was there sometimes. Yeah, there's our little doggy Archibald. So apparently he was around as well. Around with the fire. It's kind of sad that something bad happened there. So that's why we heard the noise of a dog, probably. Anyways, let's head back over here and check out this lookout area. Hmm, no, I don't want to go that way just yet. Let's go back down these steps, past the bone, to the elusive garden. And you can kind of hear a dog yapping again. And let's go over to the courtyard. Where we can look at some dried leaves. They've all been taken by the wind. Some of them will land on the sill of a half-open window. There is a guard standing by. He has secretly bought a pencil and a piece of paper. He hands them to the little girl. Her eyes light up, and she immediately starts drawing a boat. I have a little rowboat just like that, the guard tells her. I named it Lily Christine after her song. I think you would like her, sailor. He tells the girl as he smiles told, towards her. Hmm. Okay, so... I'm going to call the girl Sailor, I guess. Interesting. An unrecalled vine. Hmm. And here you can actually touch these things and and they're and then I want to say you can move them up and down on the string. Yeah, okay, that's pretty neat. So you can make them do all different kinds of things, which is pretty cool. Anyways, if we go this way, and 
now we can go up the broken wall. And over here, there's a wall lantern. Let's look at that. Alright, light it and shadow appears, forming the silhouette of a ship. In the ship holds a one-armed man, tinkering with the radio. He looks at the clock wall, as if waiting for something. He then, then, as the clock strikes the hour, the man begins speaking into the radio. He doesn't know if there's anyone listening or not. He doesn't mind. He likes his routine. Next to the radio is a photograph of a girl and a woman sitting on a cliff. <clears throat> Every now and then he looks at the picture and smiles, and just then it seems like the girl and the woman are smiling back at him. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. We're, we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you piece together some of the story as we go along, but I'm not, I'm not gonna give it all away right yet. We'll wait until we get more into it. So apparently there was a woman who lived on a house, on a cliff. She had a girl, or she lived with a little girl and a dog named Archibald. Uh, and then apparently there was a sailor who came there and hung out there too, apparently. So the, I'm pretty much going to go through all the areas of the game, and then we'll get all the music and all that stuff. Deep within the faraway room of ruins, a memory is sealed away. The memory paints an image of a wooden shed in a harbor, consumed by flames in the cold night. As the memory is about to end, the focus of the image shifts. The dark blue ocean in the background becomes sharper. While the flames blur and slowly start fading. And now, once again, as if we're flying high in the sky or even just trying to surface from like a watery depth. So, yeah, we've unlocked another area. Very nice. I think, like I said, I think there's four areas. Far away runes. That's how you know you unlocked them, by the way. If you have a little star next to it. So now let's keep heading right and see what else we have. So that that little story about the uh, wall lantern, it's kind of like gives you a clue of what you need to do. We're going to have to listen to that radio thing. The transmission horologe. At least once an hour or whatnot. So the next area we're going to head to is the Celestial Sanctuary. And here we are. Inside. And now we can either head three ways. Let's head here. Now you can touch these things and they'll make the little stars around them go faster. Kind of cool. Now let's head up the invisible stairway. And you can kind of hear cool, interesting noises as you're going in between things. And here you can actually touch these little stars here. And the moon thing that's swirling around as well. You can actually touch it and make it go faster or go backwards or forwards or whatever you want kind of cool. Alright, so let's head down Stargaze's nave. Oh, look at that, broken telescope. While looking through it, a few longshoremen who have taken shelter in the tavern can be seen. One of them is looking out the door, up to the cliff. Close the door, it's the storm of the year, yells the tavern keeper. But, 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 she's, what's she doing outside, the longshoreman asks. She's been doing that all week, tossing the bottles in the ocean. Each day, who knows why, the tavern keeper replies. The storm could take her, the longshoreman says with a desperate tone in his voice. He looks back at the tavern keeper. Well, it seems important to her that her seventh that's her seventh bottle, says the tavern keeper. Puts down the glass he's been polishing. Now close the door! As the longshoreman turns his gaze to the cliff, the woman is gone. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. You know what? I didn't read that that well last time. So, this guy's looking over the edge as the storm is happening massive storm and he sees the, the lady not the little girl the lady throw a 
a bottle into the ocean and then all of a sudden she's not there. Maybe she was taken by the taken by the storm. So yeah, you can touch these little star-like things over here. Hmm. Alright, so now we're pretty much back at the uh, entrance. And now let's go this way. And now here's the star chart. The constellations on the chart represent the spirits of animals whose bodies are swimming around in the water-filled jars. A girl in a tidy office looks at them, and the doctor observes. He asks her if she likes the, her, his particular jar. The girl shakes her head as the doctor makes a note. He talks about something that happens years ago, but the world disappearing in a distant rumbling. Let's talk about the places you'll see when you close your eyes about the secret lighthouse. I didn't get all that. I'm sorry. You have to pause it. I'm trying to read it. But yeah, so it's a, a little girl who's in, in a doctor's office. Could be the same little girl from the lighthouse area, or from the little house. So let's head back this way and up the Orly Tower. And now you can actually touch these things and maneuver them around. It's kind of cool. Let's see, the thing is, you don't have to do it in any particular order. Uh, you know, you don't have to touch anything to unlock anything, which is kind of nice. Inside the celestial sanctuary, a memory resides. The memory tells of a boathouse in the outskirts of a seaside town. The sun almost set, and the boathouse is merely a silhouette. Whoa, oh whoa, oh, sorry. But the flames light up in the boathouse and its surroundings. There's a silhouette watching the boathouse burn. The scene is reflected on the water's surface. But the ocean's twin image appears serene without fire. And there we go. Uh-oh. Hey, yeah, you really gotta swipe up. There we go, we've unlocked another area. And another dream. Or memory. Mm -hmm. So we unlocked the celestial sanctuary head to the next area, which I think will be the final area. So here we have the Seven Song Cottage once again, but we'll uh, we'll look at that later. And now we have the windswept ship. So let's head over there. And let's head inside the ship. So inside this ship, we should find a few more memories and maybe start piecing some things together. Let's head over to the weathered deck. And over to this driftwood, which will tell us a story. It was once a part of a wooden table standing in the house on a cliff. And there was a woman and a girl and a man sitting by it. The girl looks at the man with big eyes. He drinks deeply from the bottle and then he winks at the girl. His arms are big and strong and filled with strange pictures. The man tells a story about each one of them. The little girl has heard it all before, but she doesn't mind. She likes the ship the, the ship best. The man prefers the portrait of the woman on his right arm. <clears throat> it looks like the woman across the table, so it keeps him company. So yeah, apparently this guy tattooed this woman on his chest. Or on his arm. Hmm. So maybe that's the guy that's... Maybe that's the guy that was at the, uh... So maybe that's the guy who fell asleep, or Mina, uh, who, 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 uh, tattooed, or is that the thing? At the radio thing. Someone's pipe. Although the pipe is not stuffed with any tobacco, it still blows smoke. The smoke forms a cloud resembling furious ocean waves, tossing a ship back and forth. A man in the ship holds car... And the ship's cargo hold is clinging tightly to rope, but he loses his grip and is thrown against the wall. The cargo crashes around him as the ship rocks. 
One crate sets its sight on the man and hurls itself towards him. Everything goes black. The man wakes up in his hammock, half awake, and he looks at his bandaged elbow where his right arm now ends. The tattoo of her is gone, and he knows that she is gone too. So, that guy must have been in a storm, and he lost his arm. And he must be the radio guy, which we'll hear more about later. Anyways, you can touch these things. Okay, so... Apparently something happened during that storm. Alright, I'm starting to get I'm starting to piece this together a little bit more. I hope you guys are too. So here we can move the uh, the wheel. And you can see fishies and stuff inside. And all these cool little noises. Alright, so that's that's the way leading up. I want to actually head, uh, I actually want to head back because I might have missed something. Yeah, you can kind of hear some ghostly kind of thing going on. Oh, here we go. Here's what I'm looking for, the glass jar. And what you can do there is touch the jar and I'll make these little firefly things inside do stuff. Let's inspect it. Inside it's a tiny diorama of a house on a cliff under a starry sky. In the house a girl lies in bed. A scruffy dog has fallen asleep at her feet. At her side sits a woman telling her goodnight stories about a strange place across the sea. The girl fills out the stories, dreaming up curiosity runes. Lighthouses, each a home, the mysterious exciting treasure. They laugh together and the man in the kitchen smiles even though he knows the last time he'll hear. Damn it, I'm sorry. It went by too fast. Alright, so... So apparently the sailor guy, let's call him... Let's call him uh, the sailor man and I'll call the girl the girl and the woman the woman. So apparently the man used to come to this woman's house and they used to tell stories to the little girl and then apparently those two were in love maybe the uh, man and the woman him being or the man and the woman and the sailor so so something happened that made it something happened that there was a storm and uh, the guy lost his arm and apparently the woman disappeared and who knows what happened to the girl so let's head up somewhere in the windswept sea the ship a uh, memory has taken shelter the memory is newly born and whispers of a house on a cliff that is now just ashes there's still smoke from the fire and fresh as the memory itself. There's a small hesitation. It's not clear whether the story, the story the memory tells is about to start or end. But beyond the dream, an ocean wind sweeps the smoke away. All right, so there we go, let's surface. So, we have unlocked the final area, or unlocked the memory of the fourth area. And with that, as, as all the burning memories are uncovered from the islands and somewhere on the sea of dreams, a memory of freedom is born. So that gives you kind of a clue that there's actually more to be done in this game. So, I'm going to stop the video here. In the next episode, we will explore the area and then start checking out some songs. This has been Kenshin1913. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.